Kwa. Hi, I've walked all the way. Thank God for sat nav. That's all I say. Hello. Thank you very much for having our little program at your enormous show. My name is Spencer. I present Click, which is the BBC's weekly technology TV program. Uh, we're made for and paid for by BBC World. We're shown around the world. And uh, we have been on air every week of every year since we launched in the year 2000. OK, so this week we're making season one, episode 802. So the box set is going to be enormous when it's finally uh, released. Now, our job is to look at the very latest technologies, cover uh, the latest gadgets, the latest issues, meet the amazing people that make technology happen. And I get the great pleasure to do that around the world. We meet some amazing people around the world in countries across the technology spectrum, from the richest to the poorest, from the least developed to the most advanced. Um, we've been on air then since 2000. Before us came Tomorrow's World, which launched 50 years ago this year. And between the two of us, we have seen some incredible inventions over those 50 years. I think it's fair to say, though, that one of, if not the most disruptive and amazing of them is the mobile phone, which has gone from, yes, that one over there. Thank you, sir, which is ringing. Um, it's gone from the crackly old two-way radio to an incredibly powerful device, the supercomputer in your pocket. Chances are it's the most powerful thing that you have on you at the moment. Um, we always like to push the boundaries, and so earlier this year we decided to see how powerful smartphones have become. Every smartphone is fitted with a video camera these days, so we thought, and anyone who makes TV in here, of which there may be a few, will know what a technical challenge filming and editing video is. And um, uh, <laughs> and so we decided we were going to film an entire episode of Click using just smartphones and edit it using just tablets. We nearly killed each other. It was incredibly stressful, but we made it. And I personally think the results, thank you, darling, um, the results <laughs> were pretty impressive. The, the, the video quality on these phones these days is, dare I say, nearly broadcast quality, which is a nightmare for all professional broadcasters everywhere. So producers are now using mobile devices to make content. Of course, we also know that we are inviting the viewers and the users to create content to send to us, all that lovely user-generated content. Um, and that's a great way of engaging the audience. There's that word. There's that word, Richard. Engaging. Engaging the audience. We're paranoid about engaging the audience these days. We've got to engage the audience. Because sometimes we don't manage to engage the audience. And the irony is... The damn second screen, which is too much of a distraction. If we lose the audience's attention for a second, they're on the Twitter and they're on the Facebook and they're not watching our programs on TV. It's changing the way that we make our programs because of this damn distraction. Um, it's changing the way we edit programs. These days we put in more recaps, more trails, more throw forwards, more throws forward. Yeah. Because we're worried the audience aren't paying attention, so we have to remind them what's happened every few minutes. It's also changing the type of content that we make, because if you've noticed on your Facebook timeline, as you scroll through, videos that are in your timeline play automatically on mute. So now they're asking us to make videos with no sound, so that they'll work on Facebook, or at least videos that work even if you can't hear the sound. Thanks to Facebook, we now have the second era of the sodding silent movie on our hands. What are we going to do? So, loads of toys to play with today, which is fantastic. We posit here today that we're very, very worried that the mobile phone is a disruptor and it is a distractor. We posit that it could also be an enabler. As these things get more powerful and the screens get sharper, there may be ways to create content using them which the audience will properly engage in. We're going to show you one example today. Um, thanks to the incredible power inside the phone and the sharper screens, we're going to show you 360 degree shooting and virtual reality viewing, otherwise known as strapping a phone to your head.
So that's what we've got to do. Um, if you've seen virtual reality before, you'll be familiar with some of the kit. This is an Oculus Rift over here, which has loads of wires coming out the back. It's plugged into a computer. But there are mobile alternatives, and these are the ones that are really, I think, going to bring VR into the mainstream. Uh, this is a Samsung Gear VR. Uh, you fit a Samsung smartphone into the front. And just in case you don't know, there are two lenses inside there, one for each eye. What you see on the screen is divided in two, so you can see this kind of stereoscopic view through those goggles. And as you, very importantly, as you move your head around, the world moves with it, so it's like you're there. Uh, that's the Samsung Gear VR. This is the cheaper alternative, which is the Google Cardboard. It's simply lenses, and you slot whatever phone you have into there. And there's a special cardboard app, and there's a YouTube channel which has VR content. So you strap this to your face, you move around, and you see the world moving with you. So there's some good stuff there. We've been working with this on Click for a little while, and one of the things we've noticed is if you strap a phone to your face, you have nowhere else to go, okay? <laughs> you can't look at anything else. You're in there. Um, our own Kate Russell made a video just to summarize what might happen if you run a horror experience on virtual reality goggles. We're just going to play you that video. She selected some of the Click team to experience it with her. In the last two weeks of trying out these apps, the one absolute standout experience was a horror scenario played out on an app called Sisters. Can you hear steps? Is that nice? Ah, TV's gone, ah, OK, that's weird. It's a passive experience. You just sit there on a sofa and, and experience what's going on around you. Oh, my jeez, oh. It only lasts three minutes, uh, but I challenge you to stay with your headset on. OK, the room is now filled with bats. Because Personally, I couldn't. A uh, dead person coming towards me. Oh, she's gone! And I think the best way to show how scary this app is is to make Spencer do it. OK, so we're going dark. Person does a... Person is... Oh, <laughs> 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 That was goodness, by the way. Um, so our session is called The Rise of the Smartphones. So we thought it was suitable to start at the very beginning of evolution, just before God planted all those fake fossils. So in 2012, David Attenborough made a BBC documentary about the origins of life on Earth. It was called First Life. Um, these are some of the images from it. It's now forming part of a virtual reality experience at the Natural History Museum in London. I'd like to show you more about it and to get someone to experience it. So please uh, welcome the man behind it, first of all. He is head of digital at Atlantic Productions. He is Phil Harper. Hey, hey Phil, how Hello. are you? Hello, thanks. Now, we also have a volunteer who's going to be strapped into this. Um, can we have our volunteer, please? Round of applause for our volunteer. Thank you for volunteering. You're Hannah, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Uh, what do you do? I work at Maverick Television. OK, congratulations and very best of luck. Phil, can you strap yes, Hannah in? I I'm will. sure the word isn't strap, but it's... Uh, <laughs> go there you it. go. So, Hannah, we're just going to leave you standing there. You should okay. see warning. And then yeah. the creatures are up now. Very soon. Have you got creatures? There's a creature. There Good. Go. Great. So In a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds. I'll come back and just <clears throat> ask you how you felt, OK? Yeah. All right. Um, so, Phil, just tell us, and I know this is, good, this is going to be ridiculous, but this is the theme of the event. Um, <laughs> Phil. Yes. How did the, uh, the project come about? Well, I was brought into Atlantic Productions to see if there was a way we could wrestle these big productions that they, they had been making into a digital medium in some meaningful way. And because they had a background in 3D, VR seemed to be a logical place to start since this was a, a new way to view 3D content. So we just look, we looked at an existing film that we had done, First Life. We knew we had a lot of great assets from that production. And you had to incorporate that into a 360 degree environment. How did you do that? So we first tried to put the assets into a game engine. So it, it worked in much the same way that any computer game would work. Grand Theft Auto with bacteria. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But we... When we heard about mobile, we completely changed our tactic and we wanted to render the entire sequence out much like a film would, would, uh, would work. But the way that's done is we create one image, you're seeing a very small part of it there on the screen, 
and we wrap that image around the viewer's head and it creates a spherical ball which they can then look around. If you do that twice, so you have a spherical ball for the left eye and one for the right eye, you can actually create a spherical three-dimensional film which you can look anywhere in the scene and that's the result of this. Okay, so this is CGI. How are you doing there, okay? Yeah, I'm good, yeah. Good stuff, keep swimming. <laughs> Just keep swimming. Um, when it comes to shooting in 360, yes. um, what are the technical challenges for that and how does that differ from creating a 3D environment? Well, normally when the artists make these scenes, they're completely used to dressing the set for the frame. And everything that's not in frame, if you ask many of the artists, is a complete disaster zone. Uh, you know, like the front of our stage in a theatre often is that way, where there's lots of mess at the side, but as you can see here, everything looked nice. So when we went back and visited the assets that we had, it was a mess. And the, the artist had to get into this mindset of, the viewer is going to be able to see everything in the scene, so any mistakes that you have, you need to correct, and anything that looks in wrong, you're going to have to fix. And that was a, a new challenge for the artist so to work So clear on. the set. Yes, and make yeah. it look nice everywhere, which is a diff difficult one. Right, Hannah, we're over here. Yeah. Hi. Um, have you finished? Yeah, it's done. Okay, brilliant. Let's just take that off. I'll just get you a microphone. Can you very briefly explain what that was like? Um, so I was under the water <laughs> with David Attenborough, <laughs> which was great. How did it feel? Um, it's, it's quite unnerving because there is nowhere to go. Yeah. Um, but it's quite cool. You do feel like you're there. Okay. Thank you very much, Hannah. Hannah Webster, everybody. And by the way, one thing I've noticed about Hannah, I'll warn all our volunteers today, I call it the Oculus Ring. All right? <laughs> it's the mark. There's also Oculus Hair, which is the re reverse uh, mohawk. Uh, one final question. What do you find works best in VR? What camera angles work best and what doesn't? Um, you are advised against using movement, but we decided that just placing someone in a static scene without any movement is kind of dull. So we've, we have used movement. Use it sparingly. Don't do anything the audience probably won't predict is going to happen. So don't <laughs> jolt them to the left or jolt them to the right because that can make them feel ill. But as for that, the topics... That brings on the Oculus sweats. Yeah, it does term. indeed, yeah. which we've experienced many yeah. times. But the best subject matters we've found so far are underwater because people feel like they're having a mask on their face anyway. So that, that adds to the immersion. And also doing things that people simply would not be able to do in real life. So you couldn't go and dive in an ocean 500 million years ago, I don't think. So to make an experience that takes you to that place with the additional bonus of having a David Attenborough narration, we thought it would be an interesting experience for people to try. Okay. Phil, thank you very much. Uh, come and see this man if you'd like to <laughs> know anything about VR. Phil thank Harper, everybody. You too. So, we've done the pictures. Now let's do the sound, okay? Because it's important that as you turn your head, it feels like the audio is moving around you too. For this, I'm going to invite the person with the second best job title here today, uh, virtual reality futurologist from BBC R&D. This is Richard Taylor, everybody. Uh, welcome, Richard. We need a volunteer to demonstrate this as well. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to go and pick uh, someone at random. You, sir, would you be very kind <laughs> to come up? Hello, what's your name, sir? <laughs> Tony. Tony. Are you a licensed yeah. speed player? Yeah, I am a licensed speed Fantastic. <laughs> now, <Yeah. laughs> can I ask you, we're going to, we're going to the take you... The answer could only be yes to that. Okay. Yeah. We're going to take you into the middle of an orchestra. Are you at all familiar <laughs> with the arts? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, this will be an education for you, so I just It will be an education. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So, uh, Richard, if you'd like to strap Tony right, in okay, here. Just be a bit careful so we don't do. hit the hit What the button. you're going okay. to see, we're going to be able to see it as well. We won't be able to sure. hear it as well as Tony's yeah. hearing. He just, but he's going to be, you're going to be in the conductor's position, I believe, in an audience. Right there in the conductor's Some headphones on you. Absolutely fantastic. fantastic. Thank now, you. It's the audio that's important. So if you can continue to turn your head, you should hear the sound change throughout the performance. Okay. And um, we'll come back to you in a couple of minutes. Not hearing anything at the moment. Okay. Uh, in fact, Oops. they're just preparing to uh, play, I think. It's part of the experience, I suppose. Well. All right, please stay there. Um, Richard, just explain your experiment then. So, yeah, what we wanted to do is give people a kind of experience of being sat kind of where the conductor would be in an orchestra, which is obviously something, unless you actually work with an orchestra, that's, that's not something you're ever going to get to experience normally. And um, obviously a really important part of that is getting the, the sound kind of, of, of how it would be. Just going to stop you, we have no audio. We have no sound. We have, oh, the man in my head, <laughs> who really I need to get rid of, is telling us we've got no audio. Okay. How is it for you so far, Tony? Well, um, <laughs> it's a silent orchestra. A very strange experience, <laughs> okay. but they're all there. Okay. 
I mean, it's, it's wonderful to watch, I have to say, because you, you, you're right in the middle. Uh, you're right in the middle of the band, which is fantastic. Um, I'm not actually having to conduct, but they're all playing away very merrily. Cellos. I tell you, if you did conduct, we might hear something, I yeah, suppose. That's, the, the, moment, that's the problem. <laughs> Richard, are you able to talk while we're having technical issues, or would you like us to... I don't know whether to distract will, him or not, to be honest. I'll attempt to multitask. <laughs> okay, just while you're doing that then, can you explain this term binaural audio, which I assume is not stereo sound. That is what your experiments deals with, binaural audio. So the idea is to try and simulate the kind of effect um, that your, your body and your ears have on sound as it approaches you. So it kind We're of reflects off your, yeah. off your shoulders and your, um, things like that. And by recreating that, you can give a very kind of realistic impression on headphones, at least, of um, kind of sounds being in three dimensions around you rather than kind of just simply being inside your head, which is what you normally right. get. Sorry about this, Tony. Sorry, right, I'm getting a health and safety warning. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of those today. It's... I'll tell you what, while you're there... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing something for my career. At the moment, I don't know what, <laughs> one way or the other. I guess we'll find out. That wasn't in virtual reality. No, it's anyone. That no. was in reality. Okay. Uh -huh. There's always the gadget show, I suppose. No, um, do we have sound? Right. How are we doing? Ah, we sound. Good, we've got sound. We've got sound. <laughs> Round of applause for sound. <laughs> Remember Tomorrow's World? <laughs> Right, Tony, if you can move your head left and right, yep. can you hear Cellos. Yep. the audio changing? Yeah. Big, big cello sound now over there. Yeah, brass have just come in from the back there, from the back of the uh, band. Double basses playing really beautifully. It is fantastic, actually. You've got double basses, you're picking them out there. These cellos are just gorgeous. If I leave you to experience that for just a second, yeah, I'll ask my own world here. Um, what, what kind of equipment do you need to record binaural sound, which I assume is just simply not just stereo? Yeah, so what we've done is we've um, actually started, this was being broadcast on Radio 3 as we were recording it. So they had kind of a full um, kind of recording setup already there. And we just added an extra kind of microphone array that you can see if you look down, um, which kind of captures the kind of sound as a field rather than just kind of one direction. And what we're doing is we're actually supplying kind of all those microphones and rather than mixing it down and sending that to kind of whoever's listening, you send them all as separate feeds and then you can mix it based on where you're looking, which is how we do that kind of positional sound. Okay. Richard, thank you very much. Um, can I just get your, your impressions then, Tony? Yes, you can take that off uh, if you um, like. I'm very close up to the viola players, and there are always jokes about a viola players in orchestra, but never mind. What is wonderful, <laughs> the good thing about it, uh, when, when it works, is that you, as you, just, you just move your head around, and so the sound, it's as if you're there. I mean, the conductor's right behind you. And so you've got, you know, every bit of the orchestra kind of comes up as you, as you move around, which I guess if you're standing on a podium and conducting, that's exactly what you yeah. think. So I, I, in my view, if you gave me that, I mean, that's Grieg, and, and it's fine. Um, but actually, if you were to kind of... Um, you could imagine immersing yourself there in, in pieces where you really would get the textures of the orchestra. And I, 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 can, I, can, I can see buying that, you know, as something where, you know, you could just complete, I mean, it's, it's bad enough when you just put cans on and listen to uh, music at home and, you know, you're kind of immune to whatever's going on, but put that on and put yourself in the orchestra as well. That could be a fabulous experience. Okay. Great. Tony, thank you very thank much. You very much. <laughs> nice to meet you. Richard, thank you very much. Thank you. There's another thing I've just invented, the Oculus Swipe, of course, because you have no idea what you're doing with your hands, so you'll batter anyone that's around you. Right, OK. Um, for the end of this session, we thought we would do something and create something especially for you guys here. So we are now going to attempt what we think is the world's first 360-degree magic trick. All right? We made this specially for you. Um, to hear more about it first, would you please welcome the person with the best job title here, Head of Magic for Objective Productions, it's Anthony Owen. Hi, <laughs> Anthony. Hello. Um, before we, we, we get to it, just without giving anything away, you helped us to make this and, and film it. What was it like filming it on the day? 
Uh, it was very different to anything we've done before. We've, we've done interesting uh, challenges similar to this where we've created a magic trick specifically for people to go online or download an app to be able to learn how to do the trick so they can show their friends. So that was the challenge here, was to create a magic trick that will fool you initially when you see it, but then when you see it again in 360, when you download the app and you have that experience, you can actually see how we achieve the magic trick and you learn the special secret behind it. Right, so let's fool you now. First of all, what we're going to do is show you the magic trick as you would see it on TV, and then we're going to get one lucky volunteer to experience it in 360 to learn all the secrets. So first of all, let's hand over to our magician in the round. This is Ben Hart. Thank you, Spencer. Hello, my name's Ben Hart and I'm a magician. Welcome to this, the inside of my brain. Desolate, cavernous, bleak. Anyway, we're not here for therapy, we're here to do a miracle. And nothing says miracle like a plastic glass of orange squash and a painted cardboard tube. Orange juice, tube, concentrate. Concentrate. I've told you, they're not going to laugh at that. I will cover the glass with the tube. Now the producers tell me I need to bring a bit of pizzazz to the whole thing, so I've got a collapsible magician's top hat. Now, if I cover the top of the glass and squeeze very tightly, I can turn the whole thing upside down and no liquid will escape. Now that's just science, but this is the bit that's magic as I attempt to make the glass vanish completely. I love that. So now we're going to get a, a random, volunteer random volunteer on stage who's yep. going to know this is going to be the most popular person in the room <laughs> afterwards. So I'm just going to go and have a look for someone. Sir, what's your name? My name's Peter. Peter, would you like to come up on stage? This is Peter, everybody. <laughs> well, are you here with Tony? You're, you're sat next to us, room. <laughs> I'm with Uncle Tony, yes. <laughs> How, how handy he's brought his own microphone, what yeah. a thought. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to strap you into this. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, go ahead. We are going to experience the magic trick it's again, but we're yeah. not going to see anything. We're just going to hear it like we did before. There's a little bit of extra on the front. Peter, I invite you to look around. Yep. You'll instantly see what's going on. Just, just a small warning. Yes. At the moment after the health and safety, I've got David Attenborough. Okay, well, but he it was may involved change. in the trick. Ah, Who here knows? we go. No, I've got it. Good, right. Um, so I invite you to look around and we don't give it away, oh, but just give us your reaction. The first 360 uh, here we go. Degree there is, in fact, you've got the a crew the of one, two, so three, four, five, six, seven, mind. eight people. Going to talk to the nice people in Cambridge. Assisting him with his trick. Right, so we're going to listen. We're going to hear it. Simply watch and experience. Give us your 360 reaction. 360 magic. Scene one, take eight. Lovely. Quiet, please, then, everybody. Imagine what's going on. Ready and action. Think about how Thank you, Spencer. Done. Hello, my name's Ben Hart, and I'm a magician. <laughs> Welcome to this, the inside of my brain. Desolate, cavernous, <laughs> bleak. Anyway, we're not here for therapy, we're here to do a miracle. And nothing says miracle like a plastic glass of orange squash and a painted cardboard tube. Orange juice, tube, concentrate. Is it mirrors? Concentrate. Not mirrors. Not mirrors. I've told you, they're not going to laugh at that. I will cover the glass with the tube. <laughs> now the producers tell me I need to bring a bit of pizzazz to the whole thing, so I've got a collapsible magician's top hat. <laughs> now, if I cover the top of the glass and squeeze very tightly, I can turn the whole thing upside down and no liquid will escape. And that's just science. But this is the bit that's magic as I attempt to make the glass vanish completely. There's no camera cut, it's all in one shot. Okay, Peter? Are you there? Hello. Hello. <laughs> now, it would be really great if you could work out a way of describing what you saw without giving it away. Certainly yeah. how it felt yeah. and how was well, that for you? Well, I saw precisely how the trick was done. Yep. And I won't give anything away except to say there's a mildly overweight man in a red hat <laughs> <laughs> who is essential to the execution of the trick. Right. <laughs> had you guessed at all how, that, how the trick was I done? I had no idea how it was done. All right. And it was very clever. Okay. And I feel duly, firstly, deceived. <laughs> and now you've taken the scales from my eyes. <laughs> in which case, you've given me a religious experience. Peter, thank, thank you very you. much. Peter, thank you very much. See that man if you would like to know how it was done. 
Um, Anthony, what were the specific challenges for devising a trick that's filmed in 360? The challenges were similar to, to challenges where we're looking to create a magic trick that people are going to learn afterwards because actually you want the reveal to, as it was for Peter, to be entertaining and engaging and, and something because you know, there's a million ways we could have vanished that orange juice with, with magical techniques, but actually what we wanted to do was something that's going to be entertaining content that people are going to look at and enjoy when they watch it afterwards. Does it, does it not annoy you or do you not like giving away how a trick is done? I think that uh, magicians, some magicians tend to be protective about magic. For me, I got into magic because I would write into Johnny Ball with my self-addressed self envelope, and this is kind of the modern version of that. This is putting something on television and engaging with the viewer, asking them to take the step of downloading an app and looking at it and learning from it, and, and that is how future magicians are born, but also how people get into tech and how people get into science and how people get into other forms of entertainment. So. And would you think that, so that's a trick where if you look around you can see the reveal, or the, no, sorry, that's a technical term that you use, isn't it? Not the reveal, you see how it's done. Would you ever consider making a trick that worked in 360, so no matter where you were in the room, the trick still worked, or, or is where you are and the direction you're looking important? There, uh, we also looked at that, we, we talked about doing magic in 360 and that's something else we're exploring as well. But uh, for me, I think the hook, the way that you're engaging the viewer and asking them to, to have, use the second screen in, in a way that they're going to engage with, the opportunity to learn how a magic trick is done is, is a great interactive opportunity. And so that, for me, is more interesting than just giving people the chance to watch something again. And I've always wondered whether TV actually spoils magic because, you know, you suspect there's some trickery anyway. You've got different cameras, you can cut, you can edit. I mean, does TV, do you like TV magic? as much as you like live magic? I work in both, and for me, it's the difference between film acting and, and, uh, th and theatre acting. You know, I think there's things that work better in different environments. I work with Darren Brown a lot, and so you know, we work on his theatre shows and we work on his television shows, and there's things you can do on television you can't do in a theatre, and there's things you can do live when you're with somebody experiencing magic that you can't do on television. Okay, yes, I forgot to mention, actually, Anthony has worked with Darren Brown and engineered a lot of his, uh, his tricks over the years. How did you do the lottery numbers? No. <laughs> um, Anthony, thanks for your time. It's Anthony Owen, Head Thank of Magic. Much. Thank you. Oh, good. Well, there we go. Um, that's... that's almost it. Um, a special thank you for paying attention uh, throughout that. Thank you to our volunteers and special guests as well. We have giveaways for you as well. At the end of the next session, so not now, you will find your very own one of these, a Google Cardboard, waiting for you on the table outside. So that's not now, so don't leave. Um, but at the end of the next session, uh, you use a Google Cardboard with your own smartphone. You can uh, go to a special VR YouTube app and if you have the RTS app running on your phone, very soon that will push a notification to you with a link to that magic trick. So you use this, put your phone in, download the link that we're going to send you, and you too will be able to not hassle Peter, but see how it was done yourself. So um, we've talked a lot, and there is a lot of talk these days about TV being threatened by the smartphone, the first screen being threatened by the second screen, the second screen becoming the first screen and the TV just moving wallpaper behind the smartphone or the tablet. We would like to think that we'll be able to use the phone in a really creative way to keep people's attention. And I hope what we've shown you today is something that maybe we'll all be talking about in four or five years' time here at RTS. To put our money where our mouths are on click, in a few weeks' time, we're going to be making our own program in 360 degrees. So, wish us luck for that. On Twitter, we're at BBC Click. We're on the TV. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the day.